Welcome back guys. Today we're working on that Unimog back there. In the last episode, we mounted those monster 54s and today we're gonna figure out how to get the spare up and down. But before we get started, special thanks to Patty and Ray for dropping off four delicious scones. You might remember Patty and Ray. They were in a silver tundra a couple weeks ago in an offer of recovery. Their four by four wasn't working right, but we pulled them out. Thank you guys. Uh, those scones were, they were delicious. We just had one for breakfast, but now we can get started on this Unimog. Stay tuned. All right, guys, here's what's going on in this week's episode. So we have a problem. The spare tire is somewhere between three and 400 pounds and we have to somehow figure out how to get it up and down in the case we ever need to use it. So we're gonna come up with the easiest solution and I think that's just a winch and pulley system. So we're not sure where we're gonna mount the winch yet. We're not sure how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna figure it out in this video. So my basic thoughts are somehow either mount a winch there, mount a winch there, have a winch mounted somewhere that can basically winch the spare tire up and down. So there's a thousand different ways that you can actually engineer and design this thing, but we're gonna go with the simplest way. This isn't gonna be something that's gonna be used every day. This is something that's gonna be used on the rarest of occasions when we need to mount or dismount the spare tire. So we're gonna make it as simple as we possibly can. I don't have a plan yet, but Stay tuned, we're gonna figure one out. Speaking of winches, this is the winch we're gonna be using. Guys, I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up the literal cheapest winch that I could find and a little uh, fair lead for it too. So yeah, this is the plan. We're gonna mount this little Badlands ZXR 2500 somewhere on that Unimog and create a little pulley system. So that's the plan. The very first thing I do whenever I get a winch with steel cable and you rip it right out. I hate steel cable. It frays, you gotta wear gloves, and those little those little pieces of steel just stab you. I want nothing to do with steel cable. I will change everything to synthetic every any and every day of the week. There we go. All right guys, we're up here on the Unimog and you can really tell that it's been a long time since we've worked, properly worked on the bed of this Unimog, but we're here, we're up here, and uh, I think this is gonna be our plan. We are gonna mount this baby right here. This is the cab. Here's that little winch, and I'm thinking, there, so we got a crossbar right here. I'm thinking we're gonna weld the plate, the mounting plate to that. We are gonna have to custom make a plate. This is just isn't long enough, but yeah, we are gonna weld a plate in there. My thinking is that if we put it here, it's kind of a two for one special, or we can route it all the way up there and then pull the tire up and down. And with it being right here, and you can actually see the hook right there for the cab to tilt, we could actually route it up here, route it back down to that hook, and then tilt the cab with this winch. It's not gonna be, we're not gonna be able to tilt it crazy high, but we are gonna be able to tilt it so it's going to be a two for one special. That's what we're thinking. And for wiring, you know, you do have to wire this up too. So the wires are going to be tucked away behind the bed and it's going to look nice and pretty. Um, that seat right there, you can see our roof's got a little leak right there, but that's for uh, the tour guide anyway. So, you know, they might have a little less room, but that is okay this is a piece uh this is a piece of scrap steel that i just grabbed but this is going to be somewhat what it's going to look like we're going to mount it some somewhere like that and kind of all along it's just going to have just a one inch piece of steel it's just going to kind of be like a little handle 
for the for the synthetic winch line to kind of run through and guide and yeah we'll weld that on there it'll for sure be strong enough that looks like it's about one eighth yeah that's the general plan so that's the general plan for mounting the winch and figuring out a way to pick this spare tire up and down we're going to make a little plate we're going to weld it on the crossbar and then we're going to mount the winch to it and then we're going to run the line all the way to the back but before we do any of that we have to finish welding this cage as you can see here these are fully welded this is fully welded but once you get to the top not welded not welded and it's kind of a funny story because at the last place we worked at we actually couldn't access the top of the the cage because we built this thing so big that it was pressed up against the carport um, yeah, pretty funny. It was really an adventure pulling that thing out. It was just dragging along the, the top of that carport. But yeah, so we didn't actually have access to this. But you can tell I've got a lot of cleaning up to do. Since we waited so long to get this thing welded, there is so much dust and pollen. Um, so if you're a welder, you know that this looks like garbage. Um, we have to clean all of this out to preserve the welds. So for the next probably hour or so, I'm just gonna be cleaning the whole top of this cage. We're gonna acetone it up real nice, get all of those contaminants out of the welds so that we can get this baby looking crisp and clean. A little side note here while we procrastinate cleaning up this dirty cage, on that last video where I mounted the 54s on the Unimog, I actually got a lot of hate. Now I knew I would get a little bit of hate for the way I did it. It was a little risky, it was a little redneck, but we do know what we're doing. But yeah, I knew it would generate some comments, but I was not expecting the amount of hate that we actually got. But I just wanna say thank you to all the haters because of you, you guys generated a whole bunch of comments hating on the way I did it. And that video got, right now it's sitting at 28,000 views. So we appreciate it. We appreciate you guys being internet trolls. Um, yeah, keep on hating on me and I'll just keep on working on this Unimog. So thanks guys, cheers to you. While I'm thanking people, I wanna say thanks to everybody who bought a sweatshirt or anything else off our website. We really appreciate it. Go get yourself one today at threecreeksbackcountry.com. We recommend ordering a size up. But yeah, get yours today guys. And if you're a hater, get one too i mean they're cool it's about an hour later and we got everything cleaned up and polished dust free we have the the welder ready to go it's a miller multimatic 215 it's pretty much done everything on this unimog uh we still gotta clean my welding helmet off a little bit but here's the setup guys so i just opened up that valve and we're looking at about 250 that's not that great that's real low not sure if we're going to be able to actually get it done it's probably gonna run out on the last bead that always happens, uh, but no worries. We'll just make a quick trip to Norco. We're trying to conserve gas, so we're gonna keep that right around 30. We don't really wanna waste too much any more gas, but this is a uh, 75-25, so this is 75% argon, 25% CO2. That's pretty much what we run for this whole project, unless we're TIGging, which is 100% argon. But yeah, this is the basic setup. We got a 240 extension cord. This is an eight gauge cord. I think it's 75 feet or 100 feet. And it's running all the way to the only 240 outlet on the other side of the shop. Even though the shop is super bare bones, I love it. It's 1500 square feet of freedom. And I couldn't be happier to have it. I'm excited to, to see what it's gonna turn into. I'm pretty much gonna build this shop into my dream shop. So I'm super, super happy even though we're working in the dirt and we're working with logs and uh, basic tools, eventually it will become an amazing shop. But anyway, enough talking, let's run some beads.
All right, it's lunchtime. That scone is wearing off. It's just after one o'clock. Anyway, we're about halfway done. See you guys in about an hour. We got a visitor. Say hi to the YouTube world. Hi YouTube. Getting my extension cord. Stealing my tools. Phew. That took a lot longer than I was expecting. It's uh, just past 5.30, but we got it done and we still have some gas left over. I don't know what it's at now. We started with 2.50 and it's probably a 10 PSI um, of that 75-25 mix, but doesn't matter. We got it done. And uh, yeah, let's check out some of these welds. All right, here are some of those welds. Now they're not gonna, they're not gonna be like what you see on Instagram. We can do Instagram welds, but this is not a time for that. We got work to do, and uh, yeah, these are the settings that we used, 18 uh, at a 301, and we kind of adjusted them as we went. Um, but yeah, on to the next step. So now, we got to get a whole bunch of these. We probably might have to bend some tube. This was just kind of for show. But yeah, we're going to get a whole bunch of these uh, little 90s, one inch 90s, and weld them, cut them up, and weld them all along here for that winch line. All right, that's a wrap for the Unimog tonight. It's six o'clock, the sun's down. We got a whole bunch of other work in the shop we gotta get done. Anyway, first thing tomorrow, we're gonna cut up four of these, get them welded in. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And just like that, it's a new day. We're gonna get started by cutting four of these guys. We're gonna use the scrap steel. We like to keep scrap steel whenever we can. We're gonna cut this right here, cut that right there, and cut these guys for the ends here. And yeah, this was actually a fold down seat for that Unimog. And this was one of the first tests we did for those passenger seats. Yeah, scrap steel for the win. All right, let's get cutting. A couple notes before we get started here. I always take the guard off my grinder before I grind. So before you leave a comment, that's my personal choice. Another thing to note, whenever you do cut steel, you should be wearing a respirator. I just hold my breath instead. Um, another thing, we are working on the ground in the dirt without a table. We're working with what we got, showing you that it's possible. Let's get started. All right, so we just finished cutting these pieces um, and we're on top of the Unimog now. This end piece is gonna go just about like that. Um, and then these other guys are just gonna run right along the top like that. This guy here. And then this guy probably at about a 45 degree angle, just 90. Perpendicular to that there, it's gonna go right there. And uh, winch line, gonna come up, go all the way to the back, and then it's gonna pick that tire up and down. So that's the plan. Now what we gotta do is uh, get these ready for the tube. So we gotta notch these a little bit, clean them up and get them ready to go on tube. These are flat, they need to be curved. I know a lot of y'all are gonna love the way I did all that grinding right in the dirt right on the floor, but we're working with what we got. We got the bare bone shop here, literally working in the dirt, but that's okay. On to the next, we got to notch this tube and then we're going to get it welded.
there you have it guys. Four brackets done and welded in for the winch line. And now what we gotta do is make a mount that's bigger than that. So we're looking to make a mount that's longer. That's probably about double, about double that length and probably twice as thick to compensate for the extra leverage. But that's what we're working on next. And yeah, let's go find some steel. All right, so we got some 3 8 steel right there. And uh, yeah, you can see what we're gonna cut here. And yeah, basically we're just gonna extend this plate about six inches. Today, we're not gonna do things the easy way. We're going hard way through and through. Uh, we're gonna grind this by hand in the dirt. We do have a plasma cutter that could pretty much cut through this like butter, but the plasma cutter's in the shop and our air compressor's in the garage and it's dedicated to housework for now. So we're gonna do things the hard way. Stay tuned. Man, it sure gets cold real quick when you're grinding 3 8 plate steel and it's below freezing out, but that's okay. We got it done. Um, we're gonna go grab some hot chocolate first, then we're gonna drill those holes and see if we can weld that plate in tonight. Good morning, another day in the shop. We left off yesterday where I just cut that 3 8 plate and I was about to go get some hot chocolate when we got a call for an off-road recovery. It was a Ford Bronco stuck up the road, up elevation and some deep snow. Anyway, I'll put the, put the video card, the link to the video at the end of this video. If you wanna go check it out, you definitely should. Um, but anyway, when we got back, we got back pretty late, but I drilled these holes for the winch plate. Um, so we're going to go and uh, weld it today and hopefully finish this little project. Stay tuned. So we've prepped that plate for welding. Um, we have the plate that we made bolted to the plate that we bought bolted to the winch. So that winch is hopefully in its final position. You can see it's sitting on spacers in case we need to access that wood or pull it for whatever reason, which we have to to paint it, um, to paint all the steel, which we haven't done yet. But yeah, hopefully uh, this is the last step. We have just enough space back there to get this gun in there at a good enough angle. We're gonna do two vertical welds and then one horizontal down at the bottom. And that should be plenty to hold up a three to 400 pound tire and to tilt this cab, which is probably a similar weight for tilting. But yeah, let's get to it. Hopefully this is the final step and then we can bolt it up and test her out. There she is. Pretty sturdy. Yeah, it feels pretty sturdy. We got it welded in and bolted down. Now we just got to hook up the line, hook it up to the fully charged battery that we charged overnight, and then test this thing out. I'm super excited to get the spare up there and even see what it looks like. Here we go. All right, we got the test set up, all done. We got the winch, we got the control box, and it's hooked up to the battery. And yeah, there's the synthetic line routed all the way to the back and we're gonna test her out. All right, we got Maggie here testing it out before we put the 350 pound tire on. You ready? Yeah. All right.
All right, this is the, our basic little setup that we got going on. Just a little tree strap wrapped and cinched back here with a little soft shackle and through that loop. What do you think? It's gonna work? I hope so. I give it 50-50. <laughs> Get it back down, and then we'll just yeah, hook it up as close as we can. Find a way. That's a lot more controlled from the center. Another fail. That's okay. Number. What try is this? Number three. Yeah, so this is try number three. Now keep in mind, uh, this isn't gonna be the final setup. We're just testing it to see if it works with whatever we got lying around. Um, the final setup will be way more complete. But yeah, this is what we got going on. This is a tree strap all the way around, doubled over with two shackles. I think this one's gonna work. Dang! Nice. That's gonna be the end of this episode. Thank you guys for watching. We got this thing fully functional. It picks this tire up and down. Obviously, this is just the prototype, so there's a lot of finishing left to do, but the whole basic premise of it works really well. So, with that being said, get yourself one of these sweatshirts, threecreeksbackcountry.com. Thanks, Megan, for helping me. I really appreciate it. Next week on this Monster Mog, we're actually gonna be mounting that. Right now, we can just pick it up and put it back down, but we're gonna be building a spare tire carrier, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. And if you ain't getting stuck, you ain't trying hard enough. Thanks for watching, guys.